or some place to dance, I know that there's a chance you won't be leaving with me. Terrific! Chasing round this million dollar chicken coop. I like the stumble bumps to see for a fact. The kind of top draw, first rate chums I attract. Everyone can fall in love, but you must make love last forever. That old man river, he must know something, but don't say nothing. He keeps on rolling, he keeps on rolling along. Get a little drunk <laughs> And you land In jail <laughs> you know, they say the human ear is capable of receiving over two billion different sounds, and sometimes I think that's just too many. Don't you? <laughs> Good God, I thought the Titanic was a water-based catastrophe until I heard Glyn Owen's Old Man River there. <laughs> Forgotten sings Glyn, but I have to tell him that dem that dances like that deserves chucking off Yarmouth Pier. <laughs> I mean, why do they do it? Even though June Brown was only singing about a little donkey, it still had animal cruelty officers looking at their rule books. Actually, <laughs> to be fair, it would take a lot more than that to turn the public away from the magnificent Doc Cotton. In a modern soap world full of dual issue concerned stereotypes, more and more longtime connoisseurs mourn the shortage of great full blown turns in the manner of an Annie Walker or Hilda Ogden. Happily, if it's turned you're after with duck cotton, you will get the full 360 degrees. Oh, hasn't it gone quiet? Yeah! Too quiet! <laughs> 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 there and where would soap operas be without the punch-up it seems the British public do love to watch people go down at the moment of their comeuppance of course sometimes the climactic set two is left bubbling away for months but that's the great thing about soap reality you just know it will positively definitely end up in a big releasing showdown no punches <laughs> <please>. <laughs> Oh, 
can't say there's bursting. This is where the water's from, maybe. Will you both leave? Oh, my! I think it's out of this contraption! We go on close up! Yes? Ken Masters? Speaking. Oh, hello, it's Jan Howard here. Oh, hi there. Ken, you're sounding a bit muffled. Yes, I, uh, I wonder why. Must be a little bit of interference. Hang on, I'll uh, just give the receiver a bang. can be wrung from a simple name, eh? I tell you what, Shakespeare may have had his Hamlets, his Prosperos and his Shylocks, but he never had a really good... Daffy! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, today, when they're all updating the classics, instead of, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo, it might be worth thinking of... Daffy! Daffy! Where the bleeding hell are ya? Daffy! <laughs> You've got to admit, there's music in it. Which reminds me, listen to this. Did that do anything for you? Did it make your throat tighten and excite the little hairs on your neck? Listen again. No, can't do, can it? Nine little beats, simply dull percussion. Unless, of course, you arrange them differently, say like this. <laughs> ah, now we're talking. Just nine ordinary drum beats, but as the whole country knows, they're the hellish signal that we'll all be left in mid-air agony until we find out what happens next. Don't you just hate them? What about Phil? What about him? You slept with him, remember? <laughs> Actually, do you remember when some genius decided to change the music on EastEnders? Remember? And for a while it sounded like this. <laughs> Come off it. I think they had more chance selling us this. <laughs> no, a good signature tune is the making of a classic soap. That said, there are some shows that couldn't have been saved if Lennon, McCartney, Beethoven and Rockin' Rolf Harris himself had got together on the opening melody.